system. President Trump bringing back the idea of earmarks at a bipartisan meeting of House and Senate leaders. Michael Meehan, president and CEO of Squared Communications and a former chief of staff for Washington Senator Maria Cantwell. Matt Schlapp is chairman of the American Conservative Union. Great to have you both here. Let me read to you what uh, Senator Claire McCaskill tweeted after this meeting. She said, huh? The president just embraced earmarks. Talk about the swampiest of swamp creatures. You got to be kidding me. She probably, Matt, is thinking about the old bridge to nowhere and how, <laughs> you know, that really fueled a lot of frustration in the country and I think really fed into the Tea Party. Um, what do you think of this idea, though, that is there some merit to having some way to sort of get these deals done? Uh, yeah, I'm <laughs> lukewarm at best, but I, I do think it's interesting that Claire McCaskill uh, chose to criticize uh, the president because I thought that was the most extraordinary video I have seen coming out of the White House. I think in the whole time I've been in politics, it was like the American people got to see uh, how a meeting goes. And they got to see that's the Donald Trump, for those of us who dealt with him even before he was president, they got to see a little bit of how he talks and mm -hmm. runs a meeting. And uh, it's different than what most presidents would do. But when you're a part of that, it's very engaging because he listens, he's quick to respond, and you really you get his attention. And I have a feeling that this is going to spur other Democrats who are smarter to say, hey, I am going to work with the president on certain things. I don't think, I think that most presidents do, con I think most people and leaders conduct meetings like this. I think the difference is, Michael, that he actually opened the doors and let the press be in there yes. for 45 minutes and actually maybe even help Democrats get basically some of what they wanted, which is a push to do DACA. Um, and perhaps maybe that will include security, but they got some reassurance that that's going to get done. Right. And clearly, um, it, it sounded like he's willing to separate out, you know, the immediate need for the 800,000 with the March 5th deadline looming and then put some of the bigger, tougher issues up to, to be dealt with later. And it sounds like progress to me. And so the proof will be in the pudding. But it was sort of a fascinating um, opportunity because you really haven't seen this with this president yet to put people around the table and listen to both sides and sort of see if you can stick together a deal. He was the deal maker, right? Like yeah, that was part of, the, the part of the appeal for during the campaign for people that voted for him is that he would be able to bring people together. Together, that he, Matt, he's not necessarily that ideological. And I have to say that some of the things he was saying um, about immigration and the way he was talking sounded like what, you know, somebody like a Jeb Bush or a Marco Rubio would have said. And any Republicans that sort of backed that up during the campaign were viciously ridiculed by people uh, in the Trump campaign and uh, in the media. But now that the president seems to be embracing that, do you think that maybe comprehensive immigration reform could get done? Yeah, except I think the one piece that we're missing here, and it came through in the meeting over and over again, is the idea the president has been very aggressive on getting rid of this uh, diversity lottery system. He's very aggressive on cracking down on immigration from certain countries that mm. seem to breed terrorism, which we didn't hear much from the other candidates who ran for president who were more open to immigration. And obviously, he hates the concept of chain migration because he goes through all of the terrorists and the terrorist instances where Americans have been harmed because mm -hmm. of chain migration. So mm -hmm. uh, he's actually pretty uh, tough uh, on those types of questions mm -hmm. and the wall, which uh, I think is unique, unique for him. But I think I don't know if we're going to get to a deal here, uh, Dana. I I'm not sure we're going to get to a deal on the spending bill, but I do think we could get to a deal moving forward early in the year on getting, on really changing the way we do immigration in this country, securing our southern border, and also giving the Democrats maybe a few things they want. All right, well, back around, Michael and Matt, because I want to ask you about Arizona Sheriff Joe Arpaio setting his sights on the U.S. Senate and other 2018 news, plus the White House press briefing about to get started. We'll take you there as soon as plans to run for the U.S. Senate. Arpaio is an early supporter of President Trump, telling the Washington Examiner, I would not be doing this if I thought that I could not win. I'm not here to get my name. I get that every day anyway. Michael Meehan and Matt Schlapp are back with me. Matt, he also wouldn't be able to do that if he hadn't been given a pardon by President Trump uh, early last year or in the middle of last year. And this Republican primary is getting pretty crowded. You already have Kelly Ward, who was initially backed by Steve Bannon in right. the race. It's expected that Martha McSally, the House representative who was just there with the president in the cabinet room, um, she is apparently going to announce her run for that same seat. And now Arpaio getting into the race. Is that a dangerous for Republicans in Arizona? 
You know, Dana, I, I'm, I don't believe that there can be too much, uh, you know, we get a little clinical uh, in some of these primaries and we worry so much about having a big raucous primary. I think sometimes they actually are helpful. In this case, there's nothing the Republicans can do. There's going to be a lot of candidates. I think we're going to have more candidates enter the race. I actually would think that this development would probably help McSally a little bit because mm. it seems like a lot of conservatives are going to be split amongst more than one candidate. Um, Michael, do you think that this is a realistic pickup for Democrats? And last year, Hillary Clinton's team put a lot of uh, resources into Arizona. President Trump won it by four points. But you have a state senator, um, uh, State Senator Simina, I believe. Do you think she's got a shot? Yeah, I thought Congresswoman Cinema. Yeah, she Excuse actually me. does have a, a shot, and I, and I do think that her chances improved uh, this morning with this announcement. Um, I'll let Matt handicap the Republican side, but but Donald Trump won Arizona by four points. Uh, uh, the sheriff lost his sheriff's race in a very hard, a Republican county, Maricopa, mm -hmm. and I just think that it, that it's probably not the best platform to go make a statewide run from. And I think we have a very good candidate. She's raised a lot of money. She's very good on the stump, uh, and I've become the. Well, and our optimistic. gives her a little more to talk about out there on the stump, I would imagine. Sure, sure does. And things that you normally don't get to talk about, like presidential pardons. You know? And just because I want you to have a little bit of fun today, <laughs> I'm going to show you a uh, play for you a soundbite from President Trump talking about challenger to him in 2020. Just now he said this. Watch. Oprah would be a lot of fun. I know her very well. You know, I did one of her last shows. She had Donald Trump, this is before politics, her last week. And she had Donald Trump and my family was very nice. No, I like Oprah. I don't think she's going to run. I don't think she's going to run. I know her very well. Michael, I'll let you take the first whack at that. What do you think about all the Democrat hysteria around a possible Oprah run? Look, it's been a long year for Democrats, so clearly anybody who's as popular as Oprah Winfrey, a billionaire, she runs her own TV network, she, she's, you know, she, she ma matches Donald Trump. But the truth is, Americans usually pick the opposite of the previous president, so I'm not so sure how she would match up in a, in a, in a general election against Donald Trump. And I don't think she would actually want to run. I mean, I think one of the first things, Matt, that the Democrats would ask Oprah is, are you willing to release your tax returns? And I have a <laughs> feeling the answer would be no. Yeah, let's face it, running for president seems very uh, enticing to a lot of very famous people. But the actual process of doing it, look what happened to Hillary Clinton. Uh, it really shows oh, your weaknesses. And sometimes you take someone who's outside of politics, like an Oprah Winfrey, you th throw her through a campaign, something she's never done before. My guess is she'll be greatly diminished if she tries to do it. And that might cause her not to do it in the first place. Yeah. Well, I guess you can't blame Bem Democrats for having a little fun this week, Michael. No. You, you're right. You've had a tough year. But we love having you on the program. Michael Meehan and Matchlap.